In this demo, I am going to show you how to run continuous queries in MongoDB Datacell and to see how it can handle real-time analysis. Datacell is an extension of the column store MongoDB. Here you see the web interface connected to our system. It consists of four main areas. On the top left part, we have a text form where we can submit our SQL-like continuous queries. There's also a drop-down menu from where we can select predefined scenarios. On the top right part of our web page, we have the control area. There we have four main buttons. You can start and stop the data cell. With the green button, we can start the incoming data stream and of course stop it by pressing the orange button. Underneath, there is a sliding window where we can control the rate of the incoming data. And on the side, there's a status box that shows which buttons have been selected at any given time. At the left bottom side, we show the graphical representation of the query scenario. It's currently empty, but once we run our first example, it will become alive. Finally, on the right side, we show the analysis produced by the system of the real-time analytics. Here we show the cumulative number of incoming tuples, the output tuples produced by this engine so far, the latency per tuple, that means how much time a tuple spent in the data cell, and at the right, the final throughput of the system, which means how many tuples it can process in a given time slot. At the bottom, we see two Google charts showing the CPU usage and memory requirements. Note, the CPU usage can maximum be 200% because we run this demo on a two-core machine. And for this demo purpose, we limited the amount of memory to 200 megabytes. It's time to look at a simple example. So we select one from the drop-down menu and submit the query. This one consists of a very simple scenario where we have one sensor showing at the bottom, producing data which is kept and received by a receptor, passed to a continuous filter, where we filter out all the high payload uh, events, and finally it's being prepared for shipping uh, by the emitter to an actuator in the real world. We go to the top right window, we start the engine. You can see that we are producing 10 events per second, and after a while we'll see the graphs appearing demonstrating how many tuples have been received, what is the throughput in the system, which is quite stable, around a thousand elements per second, and how much latency we have observed, which is about 20 milliseconds, with some little spots. Let's increase now the arrival rate to about 500 effects per second. You will quickly notice that, of course, the throughput raises to a staggering amount of about 15,000 events per second, while at the same time the latency remains the same. So this illustrates the robustness of the data cell given the data stream variations. A slightly more complex example deals with sliding windows. We select it from the drop-down menu and we see the result in the bottom. In this case, we are collecting about a thousand events of high payload unit and then emit them to the outside world through the emitter. So every thousand events we will slide with about 400 tuples into the future. So let's start the query, start the engine, and as you can see we don't see anything, which is not so surprising because we were only shipping about 10 events per second. And we're collecting a thousand events before we're doing anything. So we increase again the arrival rate to about 500, change the arrival rate, and we will quickly see that the system is now nicely producing window-based results at a rate of about 400 to 500,000 events per second. This concludes our little example. The data cell comes with many features, one of them is to show a tumbling kind of window aggregation, which graphically looks like this. Of course, we can handle joins between streams, as you can see in this little example, where we take two streams as input to a continuous query. We can also inspect and analyze the underlying persistent data store for uh, historical information. Overall, 
This leads to a system which is capable to model quite complex streaming scenarios, as we have shown in the recent PhD thesis of Arietta Leroux, where she demonstrated the system on the linear load benchmarks. For more information, I refer you to the Monet database site or the original author. Thank you for your attention.